everyone. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can find the location of a cannon given three points of the trajectory of the cannonball launched from that cannon. Note that this is part one of my four-part cannon location tutorial series. In this part, we will be finding the location of a cannon given two-dimensional coordinates. But in real life, there are three dimensions, x, y, and z. As we progress in my later tutorials, we will find the location of a cannon given three-dimensional coordinates. Let's call the two parties of this war Army A and Army B. In this war, Army B decided to fire cannonballs at Army A, but Army B did not have this advanced radar technology in order to get an accurate location as to where Army A was located. They can only roughly choose an angle, shoot, and hope for the best, or shoot many cannonballs until it can eventually reach Army A. Army A, however, had that technology. They had this special radar that did not require the location of the target in order to send signals to and retrieve coordinates of that target. So you can see we have this radar that's only pointing upward. That way, Army A can deeply hide this radar, so Army B won't be able to locate and destroy it. It sends signals, and you can see the signal waves are going to the cannonballs so they can retrieve the coordinates. They retrieved the coordinates of this cannonball launched from Army B's cannon during three short intervals of time. So the cannonball started here. This is where the cannonball was at point one, so they retrieved the coordinates. Then after a short period of time, the cannonball reached this point. They retrieved the coordinates again. And then they retrieve the coordinates when the cannonball was here. With these three coordinates, they can find where the enemy's cannon is located and where the cannonball will land, given that when an object is thrown or launched into the air, the trajectory of that object will always be a parabola. Now, the function of a parabola is ax squared plus bx plus c. With that information, they and the coordinates of these points, they can solve equations to find this point of the parabola, which is where the enemy's cannon is located, and this point, which is where the cannonball will land. If they find this point of the parabola, they will be able to know whether or not they should use their missile to shoot down the cannonball. You see, if over here is unimportant, like the wilderness, they will leave it alone, as missiles can be quite expensive. But if it will land somewhere very important, like their army's base or something, they will have to shoot it down. And they can find this point to, to destroy the cannon. Now let's have a look at how we can actually find this. Here is my imaginary battle scene. 
you can see we have our enemy's cannon firing a cannonball, and here are the three points of its trajectory. In this, in this imaginary battle scene, I have very simple numbers: two, three for point one, three, four for point two, and four, three for point three. These numbers were chosen for simplicity of explaining the procedure to you guys and calculation, since I will have to calculate these manually when I explain. In real life, the numbers can be very long, and there will be decimal points reaching very having many decimal points, like two point zero one nine eight. So much things. For, that is why Python will come into handy. We can have as many decimal points and as large numbers as we like, and computer computers will find the answer in a flash. We know the function of a parabola is y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. And we have these three points. So for the y coordinate of this point, we have y1 equals a x1 square. x1 is the x coordinate for this point. Plus b x1 plus c. Same for point two. Y2 equals a x2 square plus b x2 plus c. And point three is Y three equals a x three square plus b x three plus c. These equations, like this, are the same as this matrix, like this. If you look at this matrix here, you will see that it is the same thing as this matrix times this matrix. When you times two matrices, you will get. The first element of the answer matrix, this times this plus this times this plus this times this. The second element is this times this plus this times this plus this times this, and the third one, this times this plus this times this plus this times this. What we want to find right now is what a, b, and c equals to. And to find that, we need to multiply each side of this equation with the inverse of this matrix. So, A B C equals the inverse of this times this matrix. Now we have our formula. We can substitute our numbers into the variables. So these are my numbers. This is my formula. I put the numbers in. Before we can multiply these two, we need to first find what this matrix equals to. I've made some videos before on how we can find the inverse of a matrix. Let's just quickly go through them here. So I have this dotted line with this unit matrix right next to it. This is sort of like a number over one, just a little bit like it. And we want to switch it so it'll be one over that number. So we want to shift the unit matrix from this side to this side. We can do that with row operations. First, you see I have this line of ones here, and in the unit matrix, these two should be zeros. That is easy to turn these two into zeros since this is conveniently one. So. Each number on row one, I subtract the number from row three, and I do the same thing for row two. We get negative twelve here because four minus sixteen is negative twelve, nine minus sixteen is negative seven, and the rest two minus four is negative two, three minus four is negative one, and we get our two zeros here. Don't forget, we should also do the same thing to this side. So obviously, zero minus one is negative one. 
Now, I want to change this one into a zero. From R1, I subtract 2 times R2. Because you can see, here is negative 2, and we have to plus 2 in order to turn it into 0. Minusing 2 times negative 1 will turn this into 0. So we should also do the same thing here. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Negative 12 minus negative 14 equals 2. And the rest, you can see. Now, I want to turn this 2 into a 1. Let's see what we should do. A half of R1 to R1, which means for every number on row 1, I times a half. And I negative each number from row 2. You can see this is almost finished. All we need is to turn these into zeros. Now, I'm going to turn these two numbers into zeros. From R2, I subtract 7 times R1. So 7 times R1, this will be a 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. So this get, we get a 0 here. And on row 3, I subtract 16 times R1. So 16 minus 16 times 1 equals 0. Last step. We want to turn this 4 into a 0, which you can probably guess. 4 times this, minus 2 here. Finally, we get the inverse of A is this matrix. Now we can times it in to this formula. We get this number here. My numbers were chosen so that things will, won't get too sophisticated. In real life, it won't be so easy. Time for that equation. y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. We have a equals negative 1, so x squared turns into negative x. b equals 6. So bx turns into 6x, and c is negative 5, so plus c turns into minus 5. For in my battle scene, the ground point is 0, so we want to find x if y equals 0. We can use this basic formula. We get x equals to either 3 plus 2 or 3 minus 2, since you see we have a square root, and negative numbers squared are also positive. I get x equals to 1 and 5. That means the enemy's cannon location is at 1, and the place the cannonball will land is at coordinate 5, in the x-coordinate that is. Note that for the Python program, the procedure is the same. But, since Python is very strong, it can very quickly find the answer with very long values and very large values. Right now, the values are all very small and simple. This way, with this Python program, Army A can find the location of Army B within minutes. Army B have already learned a lesson before that when they shoot cannonballs, Army A will be able to locate their cannon and destroy it. So Army B will obviously want to retreat as soon as possible. But before they can retreat, it's too late. Army A already found their location and shot back at them. Finally, let's have a look at how we can do all of this really easily using Python. Before I start explaining the code, let me just run this program to see what the result will be. I have a 1, and the reason we get a 1 is, in the formula we, sh we saw, there was a place where we have plus minus. Over here it's plus, 
let me change it to a minus. Now I get a 5. Let's see what's in this code. I use NumPy for this because NumPy will conveniently let us do matrices. Now I have the three points. Let me go to that picture. We have point one, point two, and point three. So I have stored them in x1, y1, and all the way to x3 and y3. Now, I want to define a matrix. Here I have this, let me just go there, formula, or I should say this matrix, x1 square, x1, and 1. Here we have x2 square, x2 and 1, and x3 square, x3 and 1. numpy.linalg.inv, which stands for inverse, will return the inverse of the matrix passed into these brackets. So this is already the inverse of A. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Now that Y, we already have Y equals Y1, Y2, Y3. That's obvious. We want to find A, B, and C. So we simply multiply the inverse of A with, with Y1, Y2, Y3. So now we have A, B, and C. Finally, the answer is this basic formula. We pass in the numbers into these variables. And we have our answer. It's so simple. Let me run it one more time. This time, let's have a better way. Let's say... Canon, and the next one will be Target. Remember that this is the target location, and if I want to change to Canon again, add a plus here. I print Canon and Target. Now we get 1 and 5. This is the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions, requests, suggestions, or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my channel. It's called NetsEDU. Today is January 30th, 2020. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed this video, have a look at my other videos. They might help you into programming or math. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.